What is going on guys, it's Reflex here, and as you guys know, a few days ago, we actually got information in the Famitsu regarding Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind DLC, and the more is said in that article that the Limit Cup boss amount would be similar to Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. So, with that being said, that is around 13 to 14 bosses, but we'll go with 13, and that seems like a lot, and if that it happens to be true, and I'll be extremely hype and be happy, but if it's not true and he's exaggerating slightly, we're just going to go with 6 just for the sake of this video. But this is going to be my prediction slash once for the DLC, and this is going to be regarding either secret bosses, bosses in the scenario, or just bosses I think would make sense to just be able to fight setting up the next saga. But first up, and the one that I think makes the most sense for hyping up the fan base for the next saga would be the Foretellers. Now, I'm not entirely sure how they could go about doing this, but I think it would make sense if you could at least fight. You could choose to fight one of them. They just stand before you, and they're just like, test your strength with one of us. You know, choose. You get to choose whichever one. If you got a favorite, then that's a cool thing for, you know, the choice aspect of it if they decide to do that. But if Nomura is thinking going crazy... Maybe he could do it, it depends on your level that you're playing, like the difficulty. If you're playing on beginner, you get to choose. If you're playing on standard, maybe you get to choose two. And if you're playing on proud or critical, then all of them fight you at the same time, which that would be freaking a death wish. I guarantee you no one's beating that for, um, I don't know, maybe a few days. But still, I think the Foretellers would be a perfect boss to fight. Like I said, whether it's just one or fighting all five, It'd be the perfect boss fight to set up the next saga because one, it'd give us an idea of how they fight because we've only seen them fight. And I mean, if you want to count Union Cross, then there. But in back cover with that little fight scene that they had in there. But we've never actually had to fight against the Foreteller in any of the Kingdom Hearts. And I think this would be the perfect time to show off how badass they're going to be and how strong. Because obviously, if we do defeat one of the Foretellers, how the ending outcome will be in the cutscene will more than likely be... Uh, we'll see you again later just something crazy but they're gonna walk away as if they never even got into a fight because they're just that strong but next up we got Lushu or as we know now Zigbar now as you guys know when you defeat Zigbar in the Keyblade War he you know you tell him like he well he tells you that the old coup promised him a Keyblade you know he bequeathed me his and that and then Sora and Riku pretty much roast this man by saying you ain't worthy of a Keyblade be a waste you know and all that I think it would be extremely badass if just Zigbar walks up to Sora wielding a Keyblade and Sora's just there being extremely baffled like wait what and they just go and fight because I think it'd be really really cool because we have never seen Zigbar. We've only seen him use his little sniper shooter things, whatever you want to call him. And that's already bad enough. But imagine he uses, you know, the Keyblade that he got and faces you with that. But as he can, might be even still able to dual wield his normal weapons that he got. So just imagine him wielding a Keyblade and the other weapons that you've been accustomed to. Just imagine. I think that'd be cool. But even just seeing him wield a Keyblade in general. I think would be a badass fight and who knows all the stuff he could do because that's the thing who knows how much power Zigbar has been holding back not even using a keyblade just imagine the immense power that this man has and we don't even know and I know you're probably like it's Lushu it's not Zigbar but it's like that man's Zigbar that name sounds cool I'm not gonna be saying Lushu even in the next game unless I'm starting to hear a whole bunch of characters regard him as Lushu over and over and over I'm just going to call him Zigbar. And he said whatever suits you, so Zigbar suits me. But yes, I think that would be an awesome fight. But then next up, we got the Master of Masters. The most fan service boss fight that I hope Nomura just does. Because, one, we all want to see the identity of the Master of Masters. That's one thing that everyone wants to know. Is it Demix? Is it not Demix? There's been some information that came out showing that Demix actually has a different coat. Like, his Demix had got some strong-ass shoulders compared to the Master of Masters. So, I mean, it is, it's looking pretty grim for your boy in that theory, but who knows? It's not its not over till it's actually over and officially revealed. But I just want to see Ray Chase and his Master of Masters, you know, voice and all that. Just all the glory fight you. Obviously, it's going to be a kind of joke fight because I doubt the Master of Masters will even try. And that's the part that I think I'll love the most. I want to get my ass beat by him and then I want to end up beating him. And he's just sitting there laughing. You know, you beat him, he's like, oh, sore. Like, just something cool. Has some snarky remark at the end of it. And you feel triumphant that you beat him. But you know this man was holding back and just, like, has so much in store. Like, I'd laugh if he didn't even wield a Keyblade. He was just sitting there, I don't know, the most just 
trolliest fight ever, but as long as I get to swing a Keyblade at the Master of Masters, hey, I'm fine with it. If that man insults me the whole entire fight, I'm cool as long as I got to at least attempt to fight him because I think that'd be a cool, neat boss fight. It sets up the saga as well, knowing that one, strong as fuck. That's really it. <laughs> but two, you know he's waiting for you because there's probably going to be some monologue that he's going to say to Sora, depending if this is in the scenario or just in some type of just secret boss fight. They're going to do something that will tease you a little bit, but still, I think that'd be a cool boss fight, especially fan service -y, but I honestly don't care. This is one fan service idea that I really hope they do. Next up is young Xehanort with a silver eye. So I, before the whole Norded situation, now I think that'd be a cool fight because one, he'd be using the no-name Keyblade instead of the Keyblade that he uses in like Dream Drop Distance and as well as Kingdom Hearts 3. I think it'd be cool because one, it'd probably give us a different aspect on fighting him because I think his moveset would be completely different. It would not be the same as what it is in Kingdom Hearts 3 and Dream Drop Distance. And that's the part that I think would be a really neat idea. It'd be a different young Xehanort that honestly we would not even know of how to fight right off gate because obviously in Kingdom Hearts 3 and Dream Drop Distance we kind of got an idea how to fight him so it's easy so going into this fight you'd be like oh this is simple but then he just brings out that keyblade and starts beating your ass doing a whole bunch of different stuff it would probably be a learning curve but I think it'd be a neat idea but then also the possibility of him giving Sora even more information because obviously this is a young Xehanort before all the events so this this cut whole cutscene could take place obviously before all this or it could be in a different timeline you really never know because the fact that that is a thing that like there's this whole theory about you know the sleeping worlds and this timeline crap that i hope isn't a real thing because if we start bringing in different timelines and stuff like that which obviously you know is a real thing in this game but i don't want it to go too far because then that's when shit gets confusing and people will get mad and the Kingdom Hearts community will be guilty of that. But still, I think it'd be neat if this if this Xehanort was a different young Xehanort than the one we fight. And he gets to tell Sora, like, a whole bunch of information. Maybe about the power of waking and power of waking and just kind of talking about the consequences behind it. So it gives us more of an idea of what exactly happened to Sora and what was the comp a consequence. Because obviously he faded away. That seems like the consequence. But we want to know exactly what happened. It will, it will brighten up the ending a little bit more or at least flesh it out more so then we understand it and we can either be even more mad than Kyrie or then be like or even more mad at Kyrie because you know that man sacrificed whatever he did and he's he's in a whole different world now but still I think it'd be nice if he gives some information regarding that whole situation but who knows young Xehanort could just honestly be just a cutscene in the game and that's it but next up we got Yazora now obviously Yazora is either you love him or you hate him. It depends if you were a fan of Final Fantasy versus 13 or not. Because if you're not, then you're probably like, oh, this knock this copy. You obviously Nomura is holding a grudge against Final Fantasy 15. But if you're like a lot of the Final Fantasy versus 13 fans that were never gonna get that game, by the way, but this is as close as we're gonna get to it. And seeing this Yazora guy, which is obviously just knock this or Sasuke or really any antagonist with black hair but still I'm excited for this because like I said this is the closest we're going to get to Final Fantasy versus 13 and it gets us an idea of exactly who he's going to be playing in this next saga I'm not saying that he's for sure going to be in it but it did seem like there's going to be at least a bigger role for that world he's in now I think it'd be really cool if Riku was the one that you're playing as because obviously this DLC is kind of going around all the characters and showing you know different playing styles that we could play as so let us play a scenario in this secret boss where you can play as riku walking up to the citadel obviously that would be crazy because then that might be to some people that could be like spoiling but i think it's more of a tease of upcoming like i'm not saying that we have to be you know showing off so much to the world but just let us give a get a little taste of that fight let us use Riku, fight against that man, see what he's capable of, and just kind of get a little taste. Because to me, that's really all these bosses are serving the purpose of, just giving us a little taste, and that's why I'm hype, and I hope Yazora is the secret boss in the game. But honestly, if Nomura wants to be a little bit creative, I think it would be neat if we could play as Aqua, Roxas, and Riku, right? But then we can fight secret bosses that are exclusive to each of them. Like, say, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something, but like I said, Riku, Yazora, let's just say... 
not Roxas, but maybe, well, we can't play as Vince, they didn't show that off, but Roxas fights, let's just say Sora as a spar again, you know, round two. Um, Aqua faces, uh, shit, I don't know. Like, who you guys, who do you guys think? Now, this is kind of for you guys. If he does decide to include exclusive secret bosses for each playable character, who do you think would be a neat boss for them to face? And make sure to leave that down in the comment section below so I can read them. But finally, and you knew this was going to be one of them, obviously I wouldn't leave them out, but Sephiroth. It would be, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to act this dramatic, but it would be extremely disappointing for me personally how the game is going to be, well the DLC is going to be releasing really close or at least close to the release of Final Fantasy VII Remake. It would get fans hype. It really would. It would get fans hype. Even fans that don't play Final Fantasy. The Secret Boss and Kingdom Hearts 3 would get them hype for them for this a whole remake thing. I guarantee it. But for the fans that's been there since the start and just loves the idea of fighting Sephiroth in every game, we're looking forward to this because this is the final fight. This is part three and if Nomura wants to make this the climax, I am okay with it because obviously he brought up the comments that it's getting a little redundant and he don't want to keep, he don't think fans will keep liking to fight him over and over again. He's been in the first two games, why would you want to fight him a third time? But the thing is he left us on a cliffhanger in Kingdom Hearts 2 where we have to fight him. We have to fight him at least one more time. Give it one more climactic battle where it ends. And that's where it's over. Once it's over, at that point, it's over. Don't put him in another Kingdom Hearts game. I'll be fine with that. But give us this last battle to just fill our needs. And then we'll get going after that. But how I think this battle will go? Ooh, boy. Cloud better. Like, this better be the time where they bring in at least Cloud. Bring in Cloud and Tifa. Just bring those two in with them. Just to get us even more hype for Final Fantasy VII. I think that would be awesome. But... Who knows how they'll decide to do it? Who knows how the battle will even go? Who knows if Sephiroth will even be one of the options? I think, like, I'm a little bit more on the... I think he'll be inside just for the reason that, obviously, Nomura seen so much complaints about the fact, the lack of Final Fantasy characters, and how much people actually wanted Sephiroth in. He had to have thought, okay, I'm just going to throw them this last bone. After that, don't talk about him anymore. You know, that's what I'm thinking. Like, it's kind of like how uh, the maker of uh, Super Smash was. He was like, don't ask me for anything ever. You know, I feel like that's how Nomura is going to be with Sephiroth. It's like, don't ask for this man again. This is the last time you guys fight him. So I think that's how it will be. I'm, I'm like at least 85% sure that Sephiroth will be one of the bosses that we can fight secretly. The question is, what do we have to do to fight him? Because that's the one thing about these secret bosses. They're obviously going to have some sort of little criteria to fight them so all i'm saying is if you still got your saves where you 100 percent of the game i hope you kept them because you'll probably need them because i guarantee one of the criteria is going to be like find all lucky emblems find every ingredient find all treasures all right now spin in the circle three times beat xanor with the kingdom key shut off your system turn it back on boom sephiroth's in front of you like right in your room turn around then you get impaled and then you now nah, okay i was about to spoil final fantasy 7 let me not okay but no seriously though that is my list for the bosses that i would like to see in this remind dlc obviously if we do decide to do all 13 bosses like if Numor was right and that's going to be how many there is i feel like there could be data fights for the foretellers that includes five of them then you got zigbar lushu however you want to say his name master masters young xander Yuzor, and sephiroth and you got room for a few more so there's a lot there obviously the scenario that we're going to be playing We'll probably take up five of them. If they decide to do the data battles, like I said, that'll take up another five for, you know, the data fights. So you got ten right there. So that's room for three more. So I would put Sephiroth, Master of Masters, and Yazora. That would be the three that I'd choose off my list. If they had five bosses specifically for the DLC, five bosses for data fights for the foretellers, and then... Three more fights, just a secret. I think that'd be cool. But who knows how they'll do it. But let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think. What is your wishes for bosses? How many do you think will end up in the game? And let me know what you thought of my list. But if you guys did enjoy this video, leave a like, subscribe, and you guys know the drill. I will see you guys later.